So after we had finished Doppelganger, notwithstanding my disagreement with Avi over the end of the picture, my working relationship with Avi Nesher was brilliant. We easily came together, easily put a schedule and a production together, shot it on schedule, posted it on schedule. Okay, the movie didn't work, and okay, he didn't want to fix it, but we made our money and we moved on. So we decided that we should do, do a lot of these because he could direct them at a budget, I could, I could produce them at a budget, and if we could find the right material, we, we could make them at a budget, and we could have a successful little company and grow it, and that was our strategy. So I had reached out to Isaac Asimov a few years earlier and tried to buy the rights to Bicentennial Man. And as soon as I, I started to go for that, um, the agents came into play and started to say to every possible player in town, Borches is going to get Bicentennial Man going once, he's going to get it going twice, going a third time. And another independent producer reached out and, and trumped my offer. And I have never had the money to get in a bidding war. So whenever there's a bidding war, I just exit because I can't beat my first. I come in with my first and best offer, and if you need more, it doesn't work. So the guy who got it, Neil, um, uh, was a really super nice guy. And uh, my financier, Don Levin, on Angel, uh, his attorney knew Neil. And I don't know how I discovered it, but I discovered it. So I had them put me together directly with Neil, and I tried to involve myself on Bicentennial Man. And that was a no-go. He, he, he was going to do it. He knew how he was going to do it, and it did get made. It's, it's not the way I would have made it, and it's not the picture I, I liked. I don't think they went the right direction with it. Um, but they did. But he said, I have this other piece I'm struggling with. It's called Press Enter. It's, it's by an equally hot science fiction author. As I sit here today, I, I can't remember the name. Um, it was a really cool little piece. It was ultimately about a guy who had his first computer, and the computer came on, and you press enter. And the computer had a consciousness, and it ended up being a horror movie where he couldn't get out of the control of the computer. And even if he tore the whole house apart and moved to another house, as soon as he plugged something in, the computer... It was a fun little sci-fi piece. So, you know, since D.W. Griffith made Birth of a Nation, he needed stars to get movies going. I called upon the late Linda Francis, and she did all her magic networking. In the same way she turned up Madonna that didn't work out in Tough Turf, she turned up Pierce Brosnan for this. And it was going to work out. And I went over to Robert Kurtzman's office at, uh, at CAA, I think I have the name right, and, uh, and, I, and I met with all the right people, and uh, we were going to get Pierce Brosnan. So it's like, Avi, you're going to actually get paid to write the script. You don't even have to do it on spec. I've, I've got everything set up. I said, so our next step is to take you, me, and Pierce, and we'll go in and start to pitch around town, and this doesn't even have to be a $2 million picture. And he looks at me square in the eye. And he says, he doesn't think Pierce Brosnan's a good actor. And he doesn't want to make a Pierce Brosnan movie. Pierce's next job was James Bond. 